Have you encountered an unexpected nodule in a chest texture and wondered about the next steps? In this guide, we will navigate you through the comprehensive approach to managing a solitary pulmonary nodule. This includes risk stratification, determining appropriate follow-up intervals, and outlining the necessary workup steps to ensure accurate diagnosis and treatment. A 68-year-old female presents to her physician with a persistent cough and mild shortness of breath for the past two months. She has a 30-pack year smoking history and quit smoking five years ago. Her medical history is significant for hypertension, controlled with medication. On examination, her vital signs are within normal limits, and lung auscultation reveals a decreased breath sounds in the right lower lobe. A chest x-ray is performed, showing a 4.5-centimeter opacity in the right lower lobe. A subsequent CT scan confirms a solitary, well-defined mass in the right lower lobe without evidence of calcification or mediastinal lymph lymphadenopathy. Which of the following features most strongly suggest that this lesion is a lung mass rather than a solitary pulmonary nodule? The patient's age and smoking history, the size of the lesion being 4.5 centimeters, the presence of persistent cough, the lack of calcification in the lesion, or the absence of mediastinal lymphadenopathy? The answer is B, the size of the lesion being 4.5 centimeters. The key factor that differentiates a lung mass from a solitary pulmonary nodule is the size of the lesion. According to radiological definitions, a solitary pulmonary nodule is a discrete, well-marginated round or oval opacity in the lung that is smaller than three centimeters in diameter and not associated with atelectasis, lymph adenopathy, or pleural effusion. A lung mass, however, is defined as a lesion that is larger than three centimeters in diameter. It is more likely to be malignant, especially in the context of risk factors such as history of smoking. In this case, the size of the lesion being 4.5 centimeters categorizes it as a lung mass. So the answer is B, which warrants further investigation due to a higher suspicion of malignancy. While the patient's age and smoking history, the presence of a persistent cough, and the lack of calcification in the lesion may be relevant to the overall assessment and risk of malignancy, they do not differentiate between solitary pulmonary nodule and a lung mass. The absence of mediastinal lymphadenopathy might be relevant in staging if the lesion is malignant, but it does not distinguish between a solitary pulmonary nodule and a lung mass. Given the increasing frequency of a CT scan orders, especially in the ER, there has been a rise in detection of lung nodules and lung masses. It is imperative for healthcare providers such as yourself to establish a comprehensive management plan for any incidental findings on imaging studies. To differentiate, a lung nodule, often known as a coin lesion, is a solitary pulmonary nodule that is well circumscribed, round or oval shaped, and measures less than three centimeters in diameter. It does not present with associated atelectasis, enlarged hilar lymph nodes, or pleural effusion. Conversely, a lung mass is defined as a lesion greater than 3 cm in diameter. Larger lesions or masses carry a higher likelihood of malignancy compared to smaller lesions or nodules, which may either be benign or malignant. When evaluating a solitary pulmonary nodules smaller than 3 cm, it is important to consider two primary possibilities, malignancy and benign conditions. A malignant nodule may be a primary lung cancer, such as adenocarcinoma, carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, large cell carcinoma, and small cell carcinoma, or lung metastasis. A benign nodule includes granuloma, appearing as a lung nodule with calcification, hamartoma, appears as a popcorn calcification, pulmonary AVM, and pulmonary tuberculoma. A 45-year-old female with no significant past medical history presents to her PCP for a routine health checkup. She has never smoked and has no respiratory symptoms. A chest x-ray performed as part of her health screening reveals a 3-centimeter, well-circumscribed, solitary nodule in the left upper lobe of the lungs. She undergoes a CT scan, which shows the nodule to have a popcorn pattern of calcification with no evidence of surrounding lymphadenopathy or other abnormalities. The patient is asymptomatic with a normal physical examination. What is the most likely diagnosis? Adenocarcinoma, tuberculoma, bronchial carcinoid, hamartoma, 
or metastatic lesion? The answer is D, hamartoma. The presence of popcorn calcification pattern within a solitary pulmonary nodule is highly suggestive of a pulmonary hamartoma, which is a benign lung tumor. Hamartomas are the most common benign tumors of the lung and are often found incidentally on imaging. They are typically asymptomatic and are composed of cartilage, fat, and connective tissue, which can give rise to the characteristic popcorn appearance on imaging due to calcifications. The patient's lack of respiratory symptoms and risk factors for lung cancer, such as smoking history, along with the imaging findings, point towards a benign etiology rather than a malignant one, making adenocarcinoma, bronchocarcinoid, and metastatic lesion less likely. Tuberculoma is also less likely given the lack of symptoms, risk factors, and typical imaging findings for tuberculosis. When dealing with a solitary pulmonary nodule, consider three crucial questions. Is there a previous imaging? What are the patient's risk factors? And what are the characteristics of the nodule? Key risk factors for lung malignancy includes history of cigarette smoking, being over 30 years old, and a previous cancer diagnosis. A 54-year-old man presents for a routine physical examination. He feels well and has no complaints. He has a history of smoking one pack of cigarettes per day for 30 years, but quit five years ago. A chest x-ray performed during the visit reveals a 1.5 centimeter solitary pulmonary nodule in the left upper lobe. The nodule has well-defined borders and has no calcifications. The patient has no symptoms like cough, weight loss, or fever, and his physical examination is unremarkable. He reports no prior history of cancer. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in the management of this patient? PET scan, bronchoscopy, immediate surgical reception, CD-guided fine needle aspiration, or compare the current chest x-ray with the previous one? The answer is E. Compare the current chest x-ray with the previous imaging. In the evaluation of a solitary pulmonary nodule, especially when it is small and has well-defined borders, the key initial step is often to compare the current imaging with any previous imaging, if available. If a nodule has not changed in size or appearance over a period of two years or more, it is very likely benign. If there is significant change in the size or characteristics of the nodule, further investigation is warranted to rule out malignancy. The other options, such as PET scan, bronchoscopy, immediate surgical resection, and CT-guided fine needle aspiration are more invasive and are typically considered after initial evaluation, which includes comparing the nodule with previous imaging. These steps are particularly important if there is evidence of growth or other concerning features on the comparison. Recognizing the radiologic characteristics of a benign and malignant nodule is very important. A benign nodule is less than 3 centimeters, smooth and round, well circumscribed, and has a central densely calcified laminated or popcorn calcifications. A malignant nodule is characterized by a size of more than 3 centimeters, has speculations, irregular contour, and eccentric calcifications. Solitary pulmonary nodules that are calcified in a clearly benign pattern do not warrant additional diagnostic evaluation. Benign calcification patterns include diffuse, central, popcorn, or concentric. A potentially malignant calcification patterns include ground glass, which is more scattered, or central calcification, which is typically dense on one side. Please remember this slide. This is a very high yield slide. A 62-year-old man with history of hypertension and type 2 diabetes presents with a persistent cough for the past eight weeks. He reports no significant weight loss, neck sweats, or fever. He has a 40-pack year smoking history and continues to smoke. A chest x-ray reveals a 3-centimeter pulmonary pulmonary nodule in the right upper lobe. A CT scan of the chest confirms the presence of the nodule, which appears to be non-calcified and has irregular margins. There is no evidence of mediastinal lymph adenopathy. Which of the following findings suggest a malignant nodule? Popcorn calcification? nodule with smooth margins, or nodule with speculated margins? The right answer is C, 
nodule with speculated margins. Differentiating benign from malignant nodules based on CT findings is important for your examination. Diffuse, central, laminate, or popcorn calcifications are benign patterns of calcification. A smooth margin suggests a benign cause, and speculated margin is highly associated with malignancy. The Fleischner Society guidelines pertain to the follow-up and management of indeterminate pulmonary nodules detected incidentally on CT. Keep in mind that this guideline does not apply to lung cancer screening, patients younger than 35 years old, or patients with a history of primary cancer or immunosuppression. Low-risk patients are patients less than 35 years old and non-smoker. Workup really depends on the Fleischner Society recommendations, which you don't need to memorize, but remember the following key points. A solid nodule of less than 6 centimeters. No routine follow-up is needed if the patient is at low risk, but optional CT at 12 months if the patient is at high risk. Nodules that are less than 8 millimeters are less likely malignant, and since they're too small to biopsy, most are followed by a serial CT scans instead. For a solid nodule of more than 8 millimeters, order a CT scan at 3 to 6 months for both low and high risk patients. Intermediate risk involves a nodule that is greater than 8 millimeters, and a PET scan is recommended. High risk patients are patients who are much older, smoker, has history of malignancy, and their next best step really is a minimally invasive procedure. If the nodule is peripherally located, the next best step is a CT guided lung biopsy. If the nodule is centrally located, the next best step is bronchoscopy. If the results are negative and the patient remains at high risk, a more invasive procedure is recommended, such as an open lung biopsy. A 45-year-old female presents to her physician for a routine health checkup. She has no significant medical history and does not smoke. She reports no cough, fever, weight loss, or other respiratory symptoms. On physical examination, her vitals are within normal limits and her lung sounds are clear. A chest radiograph done as part of the checkup reveals a solitary 1 centimeter nodule in the right middle lobe. There are no other abnormalities on the chest x-ray. She has no known exposure to tuberculosis and no family history of cancer. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in the management of this patient? PET scan, bronchoscopy, biopsy of the nodule, CT-guided fine needle aspiration or watchful waiting and with repeat imaging in three to six months. The answer is E. Watchful waiting with repeat imaging in three to six months. The management of a solitary pulmonary nodule depends on the assessment of the risk of malignancy. In this patient, the risk factors for lung cancer are low. Patients are non-smoker, patients less than 35 years old, and the nodule is small. A nodule that is less than two centimeters in diameter, especially if well-defined, and in a patient with low risk factors, such as this patient, is less likely to be malignant. In such cases, a conservative approach of watchful waiting is often recommended. This involves repeat imaging, usually a CT scan, in three to six months to monitor for any changes in the size or characteristics of the nodule. More invasive diagnostic procedures, such as PET scan, bronchoscopy, biopsy, or CD-guided fine needle aspiration, are usually reserved for cases where there is a higher suspicion of malignancy based on the nodule characteristic or patient risk factors. These procedures are not indicated in this case due to the low likelihood of malignancy and the potential risk associated with invasive procedures. In summary, the most appropriate next step for this patient, given her low risk for lung cancer and the small size of the nodule, is watchful waiting with repeat imaging in a few months to ensure the nodule stability. A 55-year-old female presents with a recently discovered solitary pulmonary nodules found incidentally during a chest x-ray for a pre-op evaluation for cataract surgery. She is asymptomatic but has a 30-pack year smoking history. She quit smoking five years ago. On examination, her vitals are stable and lung auscultation is unremarkable. There is no lymphadenopathy or clubbing. The chest x-ray shows a well-circumscribed 
2 cm nodule in the left lower lobe without any other abnormalities. She has no personal or family history of cancer. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in the management of this patient? PET scan, bronchoscopy, immediate surgical resection, CT guided fine needle aspiration, or watchful waiting with repeat imaging in three to six months? The answer is D, CT guided fine needle aspiration. In the evaluation of a solitary pulmonary nodule, the management largely again depends on the risk assessments for malignancy based on the clinical and radiographic characteristics. In this case, the patient's age, over 50, significant smoking history, and the size of the nodule, 2 cm, increases the likelihood of malignancy. Factors such as older age, smoking history, and no nodule characteristics such as size, borders, and calcification patterns should be considered. In this patient, the risk of malignancy is high due to her age and smoking history. A CT scan is often the next step after a plain radiograph for better characterization of the nodule. However, since the nodule is already known to be 2 centimeters in size, further imaging may not add significant information in this case. For nodules with a high risk of malignancy, obtaining a tissue diagnosis is crucial. CT-guided fine needle aspiration is a minimally invasive procedure that can provide a definitive diagnosis and guide further management. The other options are less appropriate. PET scan can be used for staging, but is not typically the first step for diagnosis. Bronchoscopy is less likely to be diagnostic for a peripheral nodule. Immediate surgical resection is premature without a tissue diagnosis confirming malignancy. And watchful waiting may be appropriate for nodules with a low risk of, of malignancy, but in this patient's case, the risk is sufficiently high to warrant a more immediate investigation. Lung cancer screening, according to the USPSTF, includes yearly low-dose chest CT for patients 50 to 80 years old with a 20-pack year smoking history who is currently smoking or quit in the last 15 years. A 60-year-old man comes to the clinic for a health maintenance visit. He has a 30-pack year smoking history but quit smoking two years ago. He has hypertension controlled with medication and no other medical history. He has no symptoms of cough, hemoptysis, or weight loss. On examination, his blood pressure is 130 over 85, heart rate 72, respiratory 16, and his oxygen saturation of 98% on room air. His lung exam is normal. He inquires about lung cancer screening. Which of the following is the most appropriate screening method for lung cancer in this patient? Sputum cytology, annual chest x-ray, low-dose chest CT, bronchoscopy, or no screening is indicated? The answer is C, low-dose chest CT. In this patient, Lung cancer screening is indicated due to his significant smoking history and age. The current guidelines recommend an annual lung cancer screening with a low-dose chest CT for individuals who have significant smoking history. Lung cancer screening with a low-dose chest CT is recommended for adults aged 50 to 80 years who have a 20-pack year or more smoking history and currently smoking or have quit within the past 15 years. This patient meets these criteria. A low-dose chest CT is preferred screening method as it is more sensitive than a chest x-ray in detecting early-stage lung cancer, and it uses a lower dose of radiation. Sputum cytology, annual chest x-ray, and bronchoscopy are not recommended for routine lung cancer screening due to lower sensitivity or being too invasive without indications such as bronchoscopy. Now let's do some rapid fire questions. A 40 year old female with no past medical history presents with cough. A chest x-ray reveals a solitary pulmonary nodule. What is the most appropriate initial diagnostic step? Bronchoscopy, transthoracic needle biopsy, comparison with a previous imaging, start therapy for TB, or full body PET scan? The answer is C, comparison with previous imaging. The first step should be to compare the current imaging with any previous chest imaging to assess for changes in size or appearance. 
which can provide important diagnostic clues. A solitary pulmonodule is discovered in a 25-year-old female during a routine checkup. She is a non-smoker and has no symptoms. The nodule is 1.5 centimeters with a smooth margin and calcification. What is the most likely diagnosis? Bronchogenic carcinoma, infectious granuloma, pulmonary hamartoma, metastatic lesion, or rheumatoid nodule? The answer is C, pulmonary hamartoma. Given her age, non-smoking status, and the characteristic of the nodule, a benign lesion like pulmonary hamartoma is more likely than a malignant cause. A 30-year-old female with no significant past medical history has a solitary pulmonary nodule discovered on a routine chest x-ray. Which of the following features on imaging would be most suggestive of a benign etiology? Speculated margins, growth over a period of two months, calcifications with a popcorn pattern, size greater than three centimeters, or associated pleural fusion? The right answer is C, calcifications with a popcorn pattern. A popcorn pattern of calcification is characteristic of a hamartoma, which is a benign lung lesion. Which of the following features on a CT scan of a solitary pulmonary nodule is most suggestive of, of a malignant lesion? Calcification, size under 2 cm, air bronchograms within the nodule, ground glass opacity, or sharp, well-defined edges? The answer is C, air bronchograms within the nodule. Malignant lesions are more likely to have features such as air bronchograms, irregular borders, and rapid growth. Calcification and small size are more suggestive of a benign process. Which of the following is not a common cause of a solitary pulmonary nodule? Tuberculosis, bronchogenic carcinoma, pulmonary hamartoma, rheumatoid arthritis, or metastatic cancer? The answer is D, rheumatoid arthritis. While rheumatoid arthritis can cause lung complications, it is not a common cause of a solitary pulmonary nodule. A 55-year-old female who is a former smoker presents with a solitary pulmonary nodule measuring 1.5 centimeters on CT scan. What feature of this nodule most strongly suggests a malignant process? Age of the patient, smoking history, smooth, well-defined margins, or location in the upper lobe? The answer is smoking history. The patient's history of smoking significantly increases the likelihood of a malignant nodule, although other factors such as nodule, morphology, and growth rate are also important. A 48-year-old female with a 20-pack year smoking history presents with a newly discovered 2-centimeter nodule in the right lung. She has no respiratory symptoms. What is the most appropriate next step? Observe with serial imaging every three months? Perform a PET scan and consider biopsy based on the results? Start empiric anti-TB therapy? immediate surgical resection, or refer for radiation therapy? The answer is PET scan. Given the patient's history of heavy smoking and the irregular margins of a nodule, a PET scan is appropriate to evaluate for metabolic activity indicative of a malignancy. A 50-year-old man presents with a newly discovered solitary pulmonary nodule. He is asymptomatic but has a 10-pack year smoking history. What factor would increase the likelihood that his nodule is benign? A nodule size of 2.5 centimeters, age over 50, smoking history, stability of the nodule size over a two-year period, or nodule located in the upper lobe? The answer is D, stability of the nodule size over a two-year period. Stability in size, especially over a period of two years, greatly increases the likelihood of a benign nodule. Rapid growth is more suggestive of malignancy. Which of the following management options is most appropriate for a small, less than one centimeter, non-calcified, solitary pulmonary nodule discovered incidentally in a 25-year-old healthy non-smoker? Immediate surgical resection, PET scan, Serial CT scans at intervals to monitor for changes, start empirical antibiotics, or bronchoscopy with biopsy? The answer is C. Serial CT scans at intervals to monitor for changes. For small asymptomatic nodules in low-risk patients, a serial imaging to monitor for changes in size or appearance is usually the recommended approach. 
As future physicians, understanding the nuances of diagnosing and managing solitary pulmonary nodules is essential. This knowledge would enable you to effectively evaluate these common yet complex findings, balancing the need for an accurate diagnosis with the risk of unnecessary interventions. Good luck on your USMLE and NBME internal medicine exams, and remember that your journey in medicine is not just about passing exams, but becoming a competent, compassionate, and knowledgeable physician. Your understanding of conditions like solitary pulmonary nodules will directly impact patient care and outcomes in your future practice. Thank you and take care.